1 Corinthians 3.17. How near to God can you draw, John David? How near to God can you draw, John David? Quote, he sticketh closer than a brother. And all of this is predicted upon simple belief. But maybe it is not so simple, since it can't be thwarted if you believe a prophet that says, No, you have to go... No, you have... You have got to be on that front row for the rest of your life. You must do this and do that and do whatever modern revelation tells you to do from that prophet. Do you believe God's promise, God's oath, that that prophet uh, that prophet would make you doubt God? You will never enter into his rest unless you do believe him, John David. That is what your fireside chat and its endorsement by Bishop Earing would lead you to believe. By the fruits ye shall know them. Bishop Earing is the fruit of Joseph Smith's 500 pages of doubt and just as Satan said when it came to whether to believe God or not from the very beginning hath God said. John David there are really just two dispensations, the Old, the Old Testament and the New Testament. The, the New Testament is Christ's last will and testament, sealed in his blood on the cross. The law was our schoolmaster to lead us to Christ, but after that we are not under the law. The Living Bible says, how do you, how, how, how do you see it? No one can ever be right. No one can ever be made right in God's sight by doing what the law demands. His laws only make us see what we are. His His laws only make us see that we are sinners. Romans three twenty. Quote. But now God has shown us a different way to heaven, not by being good enough. God says He will accept us. and acquit us, declare us not guilty, if we trust Christ, if we, if we trust Jesus Christ to take away our sins. And we can all be saved this way by coming to Christ, no matter who we are or what we have been like. Yes, all have sinned, all have fall, all have, all fall short of God's glorious deal, ideal. Yet now God declares us not guilty of offending him if we trust in Jesus Christ who is his kindness freely that means without your being worthy John David takes away that means forgives or remits you can be confident of that it remits our sins Romans 3 23 and 24 quote for God sent Christ Jesus to take the punishment of our sins and to end all God's anger against us. He used Christ's blood and our faith as the means of saving us from his wrath. In this way, he was being entirely fair, even though he did not punish those who sinned in former times. For we, for for he was looking forward to the time when he would come to take away those sins, and now in these days also he can receive sinners in the same way because Jesus took away their sins. Romans three twenty three three twenty six. The King James says in Romans 5, 8 through 10, quote, But God commandeth his love toward us, in that while we were yet sinners, unworthy as a Mormon, as, as a Mormon uh, John David, my dad's calling him J.D. now, Christ died for us, much more than being now justified, that means John David justify, justified, just if I did never sinned and never will again, 
by his blood we shall be saved from the wrath through him. Right? We'll be saved from wrath through him. For if we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son. Much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. Romans 8. Romans 5, 8 through 10. But that is the catch, John David. You have to believe that he really did forgive you of all your sins forever. You have to believe that he gave you remission of all your sins forever. If you can believe this, he will come into your, into your vessel that is now cleansed and, make, and made meat for the master's use and dwell in you as, as the Holy Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, quote Christ in you, the hope of glory. Paul said he would labor until Christ be formed in you, Galatians 4, 19. And you will not believe that if you believe what was presented in your fireside chat, that you must contribute your faithfulness to what he has done on the cross for you to maybe someday I guess, uh, maybe feel like your sins have possibly been remitted, or may have been totally forgiven after all you can do. After all you can do, do you see the difference, John David? Christ did it all. He offers you this free gift, with no strings attached, or it would not be a gift. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. John David, who paid those wages of sin? It was Christ. If you can believe that, you will be free to take that free gift of eternal life. Quote, and their sins and iniquities I will remember no more. Hebrews 10 through 17. Uh, 10 for 17. So, John David, let us draw near with true hearts and fullest confidence, knowing that our inmost souls have been purified by the this, this, this sprinkling of his blood. Just as our bodies and uh, just as our bodies are cleansed by the washing of clean water, in this confidence, let us hold on to the hope that we that we profess without the slightest hesitation, for he is utterly dependable. And let us think of one another and how we can encourage one another, not like that horrible fireside chat to love and good deeds Hebrews 10 22 through 24 it was so self-serving what is what is faith it is confident assurance that something we want is going to happen it is the certainty that what we hope for is waiting for us even though we cannot see it up ahead Hebrews 1, 11 verse 1 Living Bible I think it means uh, faith is the things hoped for for the evidence of things not seen Let's see if that's the one I'm talking about here 11 Hebrews 11 verse 1 let's see here that's right Oh, yeah. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. And this one that my dad wrote down is, is a confident assurance that something we want is going to happen. It is the certainty that what we hope for is waiting for us, even though we cannot see it up ahead. So, if you want to go to heaven, I mean, if if you if you want there to be a Jesus Christ who died on the cross for your sins, then that's faith. So, I guess that's what it's saying here. That's what faith is. It's uh, wanting to go to heaven. And believing that Christ died on the cross for your sins, and and hoping that Christ died on the cross for your sins. Okay. 
Yeah, because that's because hope is that for things is okay. All right. Yeah, what is faith? It is confident assurance. Well, it doesn't say confident assurance. It says faith is things hoped for, not confident assurance. That's something what we want is going to happen. Yeah, it is faith is things hoped for, for the evidence. Yeah. Was there any confidence in the fireside chat? Hmm? That their sins were forgiven or remitted? Of course not. It would not be Mormonism if you could have such confidence and certainty. Was there any certainty? Read it again, John David. Quote, I guess, unquote, is what the high mucky muck said. I guess. <laughs> John David, the cross take the cross. The cross makes all the difference between the two covenants, the, all the, the two testaments, the last will and testament of of Him who died to take away our sins. John one twenty nine. If the cross, it was if you want these blessings, do these things. After the cross, it is now because you have been eternally blessed. I beg of you, I beseech you to do these things. Romans 12, verse 1. Before the cross, it was, if you, don't, if you don't forgive others their sins, your Father in heaven will not forgive you your sins. Forgive you, it won't forgive your sins. After the cross, it is, forgive others as I have forgiven you. Ephesians 4, verse 32. Quote, as God has forgiven you because you belong to Christ, unquote. Living Bible. Quote, even as God has forgiven you in Christ. Today's English version. Quote, be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving one another, just as in Christ God forgave you. NIV. Quote, be as ready be as ready to forgive others as God for Christ's sake has forgiven you. Philippians modern English. It's the same in the RSV. The Jerusalem Bible and the New English Bible. John David. Notice how the Living Bible talks about the New Covenant, the New Testament, the New Will and Testament sealed in Christ's blood for us. Quote, You have not had to stand face to face with terror, flaming fire, gloom, darkness, and a terrible storm as Israelites did uh, at, at Mount Sinai when God gave them his laws. For there was an awesome trumpet blast and a voice with a message so terrible that the people begged God to stop speaking. They staggered back under God's command that if even an animal touched the mountain, it must die. Moses himself was so frightened at the sight that he shook with terrible fear. Twenty-two, but you have come right up into Mount Zion, to the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, and to the gathering of countless happy angels, and to the church composed of all those registered in heaven. John David, this is the only true church, and to God who is judge of all, and to the spirits of the redeemed in heaven already made perfect like your favorite relative Hebrews 10:14 and to Jesus himself Jesus Jesus himself who has brought us his wonderful new agreement testament will covenant and to the sprinkled blood which graciously forgives instead of crying out for vengeance as the blood of Abel did 25 this is from Hebrews, I'm reading. Hebrews 12, 18 through 25. Okay, 25. So see to it that you obey him who is speaking to you. For if the people of Israel did not escape when they refused to listen to Moses, the earthly messenger, not Joseph Smith, how terrible our danger if we refuse to listen to God who speaks to us from heaven. 
and this is from Hebrews uh, thirteen ten. Living Bible says, "We have an altar, the cross where Christ was sacrificed, uh, where those who continue to seek salvation by obeying Jewish laws or any laws, as Paul pointed out in Romans and Galatians, can never be helped." Huh? Quote. We have an altar, the cross where Christ was sacrificed, where those who continue to seek salvation by obeying Jewish laws can never be helped. Hebrews 13.10. I've got to check that out. That sounds like another uh, anti-universal salvation thing. My dad seems to be getting away from universal salvation. Sounds like now. Let's see here. We have an altar where of they have no right to eat which serve the tabernacle. We have an altar where of they have no right to eat which serve the tabernacle. That sounds different than never. But I don't know what Dad likes that Bible so much, huh? Probably because Bob George likes it. Bob George is not into universal salvation. Hmm. Can never be helped. Living Bible, 1310. Yeah, we have an altar. The cross where Christ was sacrificed, where those who continue to seek salvation by obeying Jews, Jewish laws can never be helped. Well, as long as they follow them, they can't be, but it doesn't say that in the... Huh. Sounds like adding to the scriptures to me. Quote, And now may the God of peace, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, equip you with all you need for doing his will. Not something that came to another prophet uh, 1,800 years ago. 1,800 years later, question mark? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's what my dad uh, later added. Okay, quote, And now may the God of peace, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, equip you with all you need for doing his will. And my dad adds, not something that came to another prophet 1,800 years later. May he who became the great shepherd of the sheep by an everlasting covenant, testament, will, agreement, between God and you, signed with his blood, produce in you through the power of Christ all that is pleasing to him to him be glory and for and be glory forever and ever amen hebrews 13 20 and 21 living bible the fireside chat just as all mormons just as all mormons does casts doubt on the confidence that we should have in what christ has done for us in taking away all our sins john david Believe God's promise. God believe God's oath. Quote. And you, being dead in your sins, how much good could you do for God in such a situation? And you, being dead in your sins, yeah, how much good could you do for God in such a situation? And the uncircumcision of your flesh, that means uh, you without the Holy Spirit even before you receive the Holy Spirit. Hath he quickened, made alive, John David, together with him, having forgiven you sins, all trespasses, it's forgiven all your sins, forgiven, having forgiven you, have forgiven you all trespasses, all sins, blotting out the handwriting of ordinances, Mormon ordinances, that was against us and took it out of the way nailing it to his cross 
Colossians 2, 13 through 14. Quote, for Christ is the end of the law for righteousness. That means any law that will take, that will make you right in the sight of God. To everyone that believeth, Romans 10, verse 4. To everyone, that's you. John David, if you could only believe that what Christ did for you on the cross was forgiven you for all your sins, past, present, and future, except one, your sin of unbelief, that's, that's Bob George-ism, but isn't your belief given to you by God, you know? Huh. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, isn't he the author and finisher of faith? Christ, you know? Oh. Your sin of unbelief. As soon as you can believe what he did for you, that will remove the last one to your becoming a Christian. Only then will you have the Holy Spirit instead of that fake Holy Spirit Mormonism gave you. 2 Corinthians 11, verse 4. The Bible promises you... No burning the bosom, no way. Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Er, hearing by the word of God, Romans ten seventeen. Remember, it is only the Antichrist that will cause such miracles as a burning in your bosom to prove what he says is true. The Bible offers you none of that. It is only by faith, never by feeling, never. Thanks again for writing, or rather sending that excellent portrayal of your of, of true Mormonism love Ralph P.S. in the fireside chat why didn't Bishop Earring tell all those people that if you are in Christ you have forgiveness of sins didn't he know quote in whom we have redemption through his blood the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace Ephesians 1 7 Quote, in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins, Colossians 1.14. Quote, to him give all the prophets, except Joseph Smith, of course, witness that through his name whosoever, except Mormonism, Mormons, of course, believe in him shall receive remission of sins, Acts 10.43. Uh, Pitiful, only Christ is salvation. I would like to know where in the Bible it says that all sins are forgiven except unbelief. I'd like to know that. Because where does it say that all sins are forgiven except unbelief? Because I thought for sure your belief was given to you. my camera here. I'll try to add more light too. <laughs> 